All right, boys. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I think we're just gonna we're gonna talk about some basic stuff for all these uh, guys that we're doing. I'm gonna start off with macros for shaman. Uh, I'll go over talents, go over cooldown rotations, things like that. Pretty basic stuff, more or less for people that aren't really familiar with the class at all. This is a pretty basic macro. It's just um, dispel party one. I think these macros are pretty important, like dispel party one, dispel party two. Uh, dispel self. It's something I use on all my healers. Um, I have universal binds for them, so every single healer that I log on, I have dispel party one, dispel party two, dispel self in terms of um, defensive. And yeah, it's just the same same key bind. The reason there's a different line here is just for when I play enhance. I don't actually think you need the second line, but for some reason I have it added anyway. I actually don't think you need it. Just uh, kind of ignore the uh, show tooltip purify spirit here. This is just a pretty standard focus wind shear macro. What I like about this macro is if you don't have a focus, you can still use the wind shear on your target. That was something that I kind of enjoyed for BGs and stuff like that. I've had this macro since basically Burning Crusade, and um, I just had it for a really long time. So it's something that's been with me for a while. I kind of like, if you just have a regular focus macro, I kind of like um, the fact that you can actually use this without a focus. It just uses it on your target, so that's what the exist means. It's pretty nice. You definitely want some sort of focus wind shear macro uh, for rest of shaman. It's super important. If you're using just arena one two three, you don't really need a focus. But if you're ever like world PVPing or doing BGs or doing RBGs, the uh, focus or the arena one two three won't actually work. So then you're going to end up needing the focus. But definitely a macro that you 100% need as a rest of shaman. If you want to be successful, you definitely need the focus wind shear. This is basically irrelevant. This is just kind of like show tooltip stuff. Um, this is what this is has no no relevance. Try try to make my UI look pretty by, you know, having like some of the same spells like kind of clumped up together. That way it's easier to see visually. Uh, focus hex macro. You don't really need to worry about this. It's just for remarking. If you do want this macro, uh, if you play with rogues who, you know, vanish off or whatever, basically the number signifies from bottom to top which um, mark they would get. So five is one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like those are all mages. Um, they are all mages, yeah. So if you're playing with a rogue or something and you want to do mark with X, it would be seven. And this is something that's like spammable that you can uh, you can use to reapply the mark. But this this is basically just a focus hex macro. Uh, pretty important. I never really got into hex one two three because uh, back when hex was like really, I guess new. I think it came out in Wrath of Lich King. There was basically battles between shaman, um, and I didn't really want to use hex one two three because you couldn't actually see if you were hexing into a grounding totem with hex one two three, so I kind of stayed away from that. Um, or else you could kind of be hexing blind and maybe be hexing into a spell reflect or hexing into a grounding totem that you couldn't see. And uh, it's not really something that you want to do, but focus hex is really, really important in my opinion. Uh, this is a really old mecha, this is kind of irrelevant, but this is basically just uh, use hellstone, stop casting, uh, stone claw doesn't exist anymore, symbiosis doesn't exist anymore. I could literally just remove those, but it's nice to have the nostalgia. Um, Focus Purge, another really important one in my opinion. Have someone on focus, just be able to uh, lock them out with some purges. Definitely something that's pretty good. This is the macro. This is a uh, pretty standard macro, so if I use it on myself, it's going to use Purify Spirit. If I use it on an enemy, it's going to use Purge. Just kind of a uh, one press. Oh, look. Purge looks really cool. I never noticed this. One press uh, does two things. Same, it's the same thing as the other macro. This is just for the enhanced version, but this is this is the macro right here. It's a really, really nice macro. Um, kind of resembles the old Dis Priest Dispel, or actually Holy Priest Dispel, whichever, back in the day. That's kind of what I got used to, so I was able to make this macro to uh, kind of replicate what I was used to. This is the same same situation as uh, the last macro that I just showed you. It's a help harm macro, so if I target a friendly person, it's going to use Chain Heal. If I target an enemy person, it's going to use Lava Burst. Um, this was kind of uh, to save key bonds back in the day before they did like all the pruning and stuff. This was actually pretty important because um, you know I just I literally just didn't have enough key binds for everything. So I kind of uh, compiled two abilities into one button and saved key binds over time. Uh, Ancestral guidance with blood fury or ascendance with blood fury. Just kind of you know make sure you always want to use the uh, blood fury if you pop ascendance. I also have that for healing tide. Just kind of make your cooldowns a little bit stronger. This is irrelevant. This macro literally has no relevance. I don't even know why I have this made. It doesn't make any sense. Um, normally this is the kind of macro that you would use that would like it would switch based on what you're specced into but the other two are not like on use abilities so it actually just 
like I said, makes no sense. I have no idea why I have this macro. Maybe it was a placeholder or something, so if I spec'd out of Unleash and spec'd back into it, it'd stay on my bars, but yeah. Um, this macro is worthless. Uh, same thing as the first macro I showed you up here, Party 2 Dispel. Um, Focus Earthshock, that was for Elemental, that's irrelevant. Uh, same thing as the last two I showed you, Party 1 Dispel, Party 2 Dispel, and then Party uh, Target Equals Player Dispel, just so... You know, if you're uh, if you're fighting against mages and you're healing yourself, well, actually, other way around, if you're fighting against mages and you know you're healing your partner, you don't want to target yourself, dispel a nova, run out of a ring of frost, you try to cast, retarget your partner. Like when there's a lot going on, it makes it a lot easier. Also, maybe a better example is fighting warlocks. You know, you're healing a whole bunch of people. You just want to instantly dispel dots off yourself. Just a pretty nice macro to have. Um, Arena shear one two three. This is like one of the macros that I think like really kind of. Um, put my like gameplay over the edge I guess for rest of shaman something that I would really really recommend um, it's just super important for you to be wind shearing all the time and in 3v3 there's always going to be someone someone that you're like not really like focused on you, you might have a target on an enemy you might have a focus on an enemy but there's always going to be that one player that's kind of lingering that could be casting that could be really kind of shutting your team down and I think arena share one two three if you get used to it um, it's really really helpful so let me just uh, for example you know this is kind of where I have my arena frames at. I could see three players casting at all times. You could cheer one, you could cheer two, you could cheer three. Uh, makes it so you can kind of lock down those casters a lot better. And if you get used to it, it's kind of tricky to get used to. It takes a while. It's, it's just, it is really, really helpful. Um, so that's something I definitely recommend. And um, this is the uh, cast at player spirit link totem macro. You can use this for any totem. If you want to use earthen shield, if you want to use earth mine, if you want to use earth grab. Probably not too much reason for any of those. Maybe Earthern is the most um, uh, is the best one, but this is just going to make it so um, no matter what, Spirit Link always drops at your feet. This is, this could be pretty handy for like a Trinket Link macro. Um, I don't actually use Trinket Link macro anymore, but you know if I trinket if I trinket, I need to link myself most of the time. I will use that bind. It's a separate bind than the uh, actual Spirit Link one. I have two. So make sure you don't get that confused. Like I have a, I have a spirit link that will drop in my cursor, and I have a spirit link, or spirit link that will just drop in my player. Um, so it just makes the trinket link like a little bit smoother, kind of like how it used to be. Uh, but not a super important macro. Just kind of makes it feel a little bit cleaner for me. Uh, this is the one I was talking about slash cast um, at cursor. So this is the one that's going to drop it like right wherever your cursor's at, um, without actually having. To to click anything and I think that makes like the shaman gameplay feel like a lot smoother makes it feel not nearly as clunky um, definitely something I would rec recommend doing and from what I understand in this patch you can actually uh, you can drop totems from you know z-axis now so like if you're on something like blades edge bridge or something you can actually drop totems down I'm not 100% sure on that but it's pretty nice not really relevant to the uh, at cursor macros but <sighs> lightning surge totems that even exist anymore I don't even think I use this macro anymore. I can actually just delete this. Chain heal, wind shear. This is uh, pretty relevant. This is kind of like what I showed you with the uh, chain heal lava burst. I don't even know why I have this. Apparently I have multiple binds for chain heal. I didn't even know that, but uh, the more you know. Pretty standard help harm, <coughs> excuse me, a pretty standard help harm macro. Uh, much like the other uh, help harm macros I have. If you use it on a friendly, it's going to be the helpful spell, which in this case is scenario, and on the enemy it's going to be wind shear. Um, let's go through the macros here. Healing Tide is just tied in with Blood Fury, um, just to make sure you do the most healing that you can. Uh, sometimes I use Blood Fury separately if I feel like I'm going to cast a lot, but sometimes it's kind of one of those things that just slips my mind, um, and I like having macroed into my big CDs. Pretty standard. This is just Earthbind, cast Earthbind at Cursor. I know the tooltips are kind of funky for some of these, so I wouldn't pay too much attention to them. This is a uh, pretty popular macro. A lot of people are um, are big fans of this one. Let me see if I can invite someone here. Uh, let me just invite Super Tees here real quick. So if uh, if you drop this macro and then you click, so one press will drop the totem. The second press will actually drop a raid marker. And uh, a lot of people have a lot of trouble seeing Earthen Totem. You kind of see it's like pretty hard to see with the graphics. So this macro right here is going to be the one where it actually drops the big world marker which is going to make it a lot more uh, helpful to actually see the earthen totem for your DPS to recognize maybe you're playing no voice maybe um, you know your DPS are having trouble recognizing anyway and you could kind of just say like you know look for the big blue marker uh, pretty helpful for DPS a lot of people kind of uh, are interested in this macro at all times um, 
earth grab, at cursor, like I said, the at cursor macros are really, really smooth. Uh, one thing that could kind of like bite you, I guess, with the at cursor macros, like let's just say, for example, you don't realize how far you are and you want to, you know, maybe throw your earth bind like all the way at the blue. It's going to throw it as far as it can, but in some situations, like as you can see, it's a little bit under where my mouse was. It could, it's only going to throw it as far as you can. So if you actually drop a totem out of range, it's going to throw it to the furthest possible range, which is, um, you know, sometimes it's going to be a little unfortunate. Maybe uh, it's going to throw you off a little bit. I know sometimes I think I, I was going for like cap stuns and ended up being like a little bit shorter than where I wanted to be and ended up missing it. But yeah, I have, I have no idea what this macro is irrelevant. Uh, this is actually a really, really nice macro. This macro is going to make it so you can swap between Capstone, Voodoo Totem, and Earth Grab. Um, you can see it kind of like rotating on my bar down here. And it also makes it so you um, you drop all three of them at your cursor. So this is actually like a really, really sick macro. It makes it so it's always on your bar. You know, if you swap into Voodoo Totem and you forget to drag it down on your bar, maybe you'll screw it up or whatever. But this is a really, really helpful macro. Um, Astral shift and stop casting. I don't know why I have that. There must have been a point in time where I was spamming like, or you know, my astral shift or something, and it didn't go off and ended up taking a bunch of damage. I assume that this is probably pretty helpful. You know, maybe you're going for a heal and all of a sudden a lot of damage is coming in. And you need to actually cancel and get that astral shift off. Um, you could do it, you know, with just escape. You could do it by moving, um, but you know, it's probably not going to be as fast as the macro. These are for Enhance, Healing Surge 1, 2. This macro I actually kind of found to be pretty important versus teams that just do a ton of damage, specifically Mage Rogue. Um, I would fight Ra Mage Rogue sometimes where, you know, they would cheap shot me into cheap shot into cheap shot, and in between the second and the third stun, I could, you know, I could get my wall off, but I wasn't able to press my binds quickly enough to do both of them. So I just kind of made a macro for it where it would put her shield up and use shield wall. I still have a regular bind for my astral shift. I still have a regular bind for my uh, my earth shield, but I, I have a one bind for both of them, kind of, you know, in a pinch where I need to press both. Uh, Riptide player, not really that important. I'm just kind of lazy. It's kind of similar to like the dispel and stuff where, you know, you're healing a whole bunch of people. You just get to Riptide yourself without actually, without actually changing targets. It's something I have on a lot of my healers. Like on my Druid, I have Rejuice, Rejuve Self, so I don't have to switch targets. On my Priest, I have Shield Self, so I don't have to switch target. On my Paladin, I have uh, Holy Shock Self, so I don't have to switch target. And uh, it's just kind of something that I've just gotten used to over the years. Kind of like that, uh, I guess, player cast, um, you know, self-heal button. I think that kind of wraps it up for all the uh, Shaman-specific macros. Um, this one... Is definitely going to help you out a lot. I would say the uh, focus wind shear and the arena one two three wind shear are going to be pretty important. The focus hex, but you know, pretty basic stuff for macros. Maybe some of these are um, something that you guys haven't seen before, and it's going to be pretty helpful. But I would say for the most part these days, like macros aren't really uh, that game breaking. So let's go over the talents now. Uh, from what I've seen in threes, torrent seems to always be better there's just so many interrupts and you know sometimes you catch yourself like faking a lot or having to heal like you know a whole bunch of people and torrent just kind of feels better uh, i think in 2v2 maybe you can go for undulation because there's one less interrupt one less person you have to deal with uh you don't really have to spread your riptides out on as many people but for the most part torrent's going to be your kind of go-to i also think it's better for um i think it's better for players that are like struggling more with casting maybe you're getting interrupted more um, you know, maybe you don't fake as much, whatever. Uh, so Torrent's kind of the go-to. Gust of Wind is always going to be the go-to. Oh, never use Unleash Life. It's just not good enough. Um, Undulation, if you really feel like you're free casting a lot and people are dying, you feel like you're not being interrupted, you're not being CC'd, go ahead and give Undulation a try in 3v3. Um, in some situations, it's not bad, but if you're actually spam casting, Undulation is more throughput than Torrent, but Torrent's kind of like a safer pick in most situations. Gust of Wind is going to be like, you know, it's, it's your bread and butter for kiting. Um, you always want to kind of jump and be moving forward before you use it because you're going to end up getting more distance. If you kind of just, you know, do it standing still, I'm pretty sure you don't get as far. Um, Gust of Wind is going to be super sick on maps that have Z access. So like Tiger's Peak, you can jump up onto the platform, get away from melee. Uh, Dalaran Arena, you can go down, jump up onto the uh, also, I guess, a platform, get away. Um, Blade's Edge, you could try and juke people off, or like, let's just say, these rocks or the bridge, you could you could jump, turn, and then jump back on onto the uh, onto the bridge and maybe juke some melee off. Um, so definitely going to be your bread and butter for getting away. It's basically one of your only uh, escape mechanisms. It actually works really well with Earth, Earth Grab Totem. 
Uh, if you're going around a pillar, you could earth grab totem, you know, and then you could try and gust a win and just be gone. So those those two uh, work really, really well hand in hand. In terms of this row, I would say it kind of really depends on the comp that you're playing or the comps that you're playing against, which one's the best. All three of these totems, excuse me, all three of these talents actually have a place in Arena. Lightning Surge, I would probably say you can use if you don't have a, uh, a comp with many stuns. For example, yesterday I was playing Destro MLS, in which we had no stuns. So instead of going for the root or the, for the Voodoo totem, I was trying to you know get the uh, Cap stun or I guess Lightning Surge totem out of uh, double coils or out of polymorphs, help set up uh, kills with that stun. Um, Earth Grab is going to be really good in teams where you already have a lot of stuns. Earth Grab is really good in melee and against melee in general. Uh, try and lock them down a little bit. And then Voodoo Totem, I normally only use if I feel like the team needs an extra interrupt. You could try and use it for Destro Warlocks. You could try to use it if you're rushing down healers. Um, Crashing Waves is basically your always your go-to. Uh, some people play Ancestral Guidance with Purifying Waters if they're playing like a really all-in spec. That's something that's maybe a little bit more advanced. You, if, you know, if you are more advanced and you want to maybe give that a shot, you could. But Crashing Waves is going to be more throughput throughout the game. It's going to give you more of those quicker healing waves, more of those crit healing surges. And uh, it's definitely going to be something where, you know, you're just going to get a lot more throughput out of it for sure. Um, Earthen Shield Totem is, once again, kind of your bread and butter. Ancestral Protection Totem is not very, like, reliable in Arena. Maybe a one-trick pony, just five-minute cooldown. It's just... It's it's very meh, you know. Uh, anyone that knows what the talent is is going to be able to easily exploit you having it. They could just not kill the person. Uh, they can kill the totem really easily. Um, also, there's an there's like a big animation when someone's able to be res, so they could just kind of camp the corpse or where the player died and just go for a quick kill again anyway. Uh, it's not really that good. Ancestral Vigor has a place sometimes in Arena, but it's really rare. Every time I play it, it's not really... It doesn't really feel like it's that great. Earthen Shield Totem is just going to be that that main cooldown that you use to try and prevent damage. It's it's basically the cooldown that you're going to be using the most often to try and mitigate some of that damage. Um, bottomless Depths is something that you could use if you feel like you're struggling in mana. I think this is something that's probably used pretty commonly in 2v2. Uh, you can try using it in 3v3 if you're fighting teams that have kind of like low burst potential, uh, lower consistent damage, but they kind of like play to play to win the long game. Um, it's just going to be something that you have to try out. Like if you're if you're constantly losing just only on mana, go ahead and give Bottomless Depths a try. You're definitely going to lose some throughput, losing Echo of the Elements, but it's something that's like, you know, why not switch it up a little bit if you feel like you're only lo losing on mana. Uh, but Echo of the Elements is going to be like the go-to one, two charges of Lava Burst, Healing Stream, and Riptide. So uh, Riptide and Healing Stream being, you know, most of the time probably like your number one healing spells. Uh, so obviously you're going to be really, really powerful in that regard. And then uh, Ascendance is going to be your go-to every time. High Tide, completely useless. Wellspring, completely useless. And Ascendance is absolutely amazing. So it's definitely going to be uh, be the number one pick there. All right, so Trinkets, this is, um, this is a little bit of a tricky one. So Relentless is obviously going to be really, really good with, um, with Orc. If you're not Orc, you probably aren't going to pick Relentless nearly as often. So I would say, like, by default, if you're Orc, you're probably going to play Relentless a lot of the time. If you're not Orc, you're probably going to play Trinket a lot of the time. But even as Orc, you're, you're still going to play Trinket sometimes. There's teams that can kill you if you play Relentless. So, for example, like, Windwalker, Frost Mage or something, Windwalker, Arcane Mage, maybe even Windwalker DK. Um, they can just kill you even with the, su the super short stun. So you're still kind of forced to play that Trinket. Uh, you're also going to play trink uh, Trinket against teams that have really high burst potential, but really, like low CC potential, so teams that you feel like can one-shot you, you know, basically every two minutes, but there won't be much CC in between. I'm not really sure what I would, what that is off the top of my head. Maybe like something with like a Destro Warlock, you're not really going to get feared very often, but there's a chance that maybe every once in a while they could just try and blow you up. Vim, you can play, for the, yeah, for this tier you could use all three of these. Vim, you'll probably use, obviously, if you feel like you're not getting trained. Depends on the comp that you play, the comp that you play against, like... I play Vim versus maybe Melee Cleaves if I'm playing like Shadow Priest Boomkin, and I feel like if they attack me, they'll just lose because then you have two casters free casting. Um, kind of probably goes with any double caster type thing, you know, if Melee or if anyone just kind of gets off you, uh, you can really uh, just take advantage of the fact that you have two casters free casting and you could just kind of tear people apart. Uh, your default pick is going to be Defender. Uh, Defender is just really good in general. It's uh, obviously always going to get value um, every single matchup that you play. 
uh, you're going to be healing someone below 50% health, and if you, if not, you're winning, you know what I mean? Uh, and then calming, I only really use against um, basically like UA warlocks. It's just really, really good against dispelling UAs. It's really good against uh, the multiple interrupts that the UA locks uh, have, as well as their teammates have. And also, I guess sometimes you could use maybe use calming versus like the really, really uh, sticky melee cleaves. For example, Windwalker DK, it's really tough to get away from that, and they have so many interrupts. So calming is normally good against something like that. Um, for for this tier, you basically only spec Sky Fury Totem. Um, Wind Fury and Counter Strike are so nerfed to the point where it's just not better. I'm um, pretty sure Sky Fury Totem is still bugged and only works for 10% healing for healers. But even then, like 10% crit, most uh, most casters, if you play with any casters in general, are going to take some benefit from this. And even if you play with melee, like some melee still take benefit from this. If you play with a uh, you know, Death Knights, they do some spell damage, maybe they crit Death Coils, maybe it works for their Gargoyle, their Gargoyle or Arbiter, I actually don't really know. I think Demon Hunters might even take effect from this when they're in meta form, or maybe even with Fel Barrage, like, so it's it's basically going to get value no matter what you do. You're never going to take Tidebringer, even if you play Spirit Link, so I, your go-to is going to be Swelling Waves here. Swelling Waves makes it so the only time you ever use Healing Surge is on yourself, otherwise you only want to use Healing Wave. Healing Wave is just better than Healing Surge in Arena, except if you use Healing Surge on yourself, but even then it's like you're spending a lot more mana for just a little bit more like throughput, so you, even then you don't always Healing Surge yourself, you're going to have to uh, Healing Wave yourself most of the time. Purifying Waters you're just going to use if you're playing like a really like all-in type spec, so basically you're going to be probably specced into Electric Hue. Uh, you're just going to be playing the short game, you want to purge as much as you can, and you're just going to try and use those purge heals to help you recover. Um, that way you don't have to heal as much, which means you could purge more. Mainly going to uh, happen only versus like rest of your teams, because they're the only teams that actually uh, are going to have magic buffs up the entire game. Uh, for this talent choice, Voodoo Mastery is actually something that's like really interesting, but not something you play too often. You can use it, you know, you got to really think about this one. Um, you gotta be playing a comp that isn't going to be like doing much damage to the people that you plan on hexing, because hex is gonna be such a short cooldown, so you don't really wanna be playing something that's gonna be doing like a lot of damage to everyone or else your hex is just gonna break. But yeah, if you're playing a comp that doesn't have like a D curse like on the other team, you can maybe take advantage of uh, just spam hexing DPS, for example, you know, let's just say you're playing it's like a Mistweaver Monk Cleave, maybe DK Windwalker, you know, hex the Windwalker, hex the DK, hex the Windwalker, hex the DK, just every 10 seconds, just, uh, you know, make sure you make their life a living hell, but it's something that your DPS have to kind of get used to and work uh, work into the rotations too, because a lot of times they'll just break it and then it kind of feels like you're wasting it, but yeah. Uh, Electrocute, you're probably going to play versus teams. Um, where you want to try and be a little bit more offensive, it actually does quite a bit of damage. It, it makes you feel like you're doing uh, doing a lot of uh, a damage while purging, and it's a really really nice talent in general. You use it a lot versus Resto Druids. You use it a lot versus Mistweaver monks. You can use it versus Dispriest. Um, it just kind of depends like what they're playing. So for example, if I'm fighting a Dispriest and they're playing Rogue Mage, uh, most likely I'll probably use Grounding Totem. But if I'm playing like a really aggressive comp and that we think our win strategy is to just be super aggressive, maybe you want to rush down the priest. Electrocute's a good choice. So you just got to take a, uh, you got to take into consideration how you're playing. Do you want to use Grounding Totem and be more defensive, try and win the long game? Do you want to use Electrocute, be more offensive, use the mana, maybe play Purifying Waters, win the short game? Um, but death, both talent choices are definitely good. There's no you know, one is better than the other. It's just kind of dependent on what comp you're playing, what comp you're playing against, what your strategy, strategy is going to be. And um, for this last talent choice, this is something that um, is is pretty standard. You're just going to take Urshel most of the time. Rippling Waters used to work, but it, it doesn't work anymore. I, I don't think Rippling Waters is good at all, so I would not recommend it. Spirit Link, I think, still has a place if you're, <laughs> if you're playing maybe like a comp that's really, really CC heavy. I don't really like Spirit Link if I have melee DPS on my team because it feels like they're always running away from me. Basically the only time I feel like I've liked Spirit Link is when I play like Boomkin Shadow Priest and we're playing against like, you know, uh, Thug Cleave, which is Hunter Rogue. Um, I don't really even like it versus Mage Rogue. So Earth Shield is going to be your bread and butter here. Um, you just got to make sure you have it up on the right person at the right time. 10% damage reduction was just recently nerfed, but still really, really powerful. So for in terms of like just standard healing rotation, the shaman healing rotation is really simple. Obviously the f the thing that's most important is you want to keep a shell up on the person that's taking the most damage. And then from there you just want to keep a riptide rolling on one person. Um, you obviously got to keep it on multiple people. If multiple people are taking damage, it's kind of just how you heal like through spread pressure. Um, so 
you want to make sure that if your entire team's taking damage, you should have three Riptides out on your entire team the whole game. It's going to make a world of difference if you know for example let's just say your whole team's dying and you're just like freaking out and you just riptide this guy and then you riptide the same person again uh and then you know you riptide him even again you know you would have so much healing out on three people because torrent's doing a lot of work it's uh the initial riptide healing then you have the hot ticking on three people so you want to make sure that you kind of like prioritize spreading those riptides out for spread pressure um even if it's like a really small amount of spread pressure you really got to spread those riptides out to kind of maximize the uh the throughput that you can do and um, with that being said, you know, you just want to make sure that your Riptides are basically always on CD. Um, you want to have a healing stream always down. You don't want to overlap healing streams unless it's like a really desperate situation because basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be overlapping the Queen's Decree because the Queen's Decree is not going to stack and you're also going to be overlapping the, uh, the Karis of the Tide Mother that's not going to stack. So you want to make sure that you're using them separately. Um, in dire situations where you feel like you cannot cast, you need the most possible healing throughput, you know, you can use both healing stream charges, but it's better to kind of like, you know, place them out, make sure that there's always like one rolling at a time. Um, and it's just going to be more throughput. And kind of like I said earlier, healing wave is going to be your go-to heal in arena. Um, you want to make sure that tidal waves is always up. It's just going to make those healing waves really, really fast in arena. And what's kind of funny is in arena, healing wave is faster cast than healing surge. It's less mana than Healing Surge, and it heals for more than Healing Surge. So it's literally just better in every single situation, unless you're healing yourself uh, with Swelling Waves, in which in which then uh, Healing Surge can be better. But you know, it's still a lot more mana for less efficiency. So the Shaman healing rotation is pretty basic. Um, you know, it's definitely not what it used to be. So pretty simple stuff there. And then um, in terms of cooldown. Uh, the first cooldown that you're probably going to be using every single game is just going to be Earthen Shield. Just one minute cooldown, the shortest cooldown that you have, super, super powerful. Um, and then um, this is just kind of for healing. Like you got to you gotta use the wall based on the Astral Shift, based on like how much damage you think you're going to take. You know, you want to use Astral Shift for things like Vendetta, Arcane Power, Icy Veins, you know, Serenity. The big cooldowns are the ones that you're going to want Astral Shift for. You want to try and not use astral shift for uh for the smaller cds and the same thing kind of works for like earthen shield like you could earthen shield vendettas you can earthen shield pillars of frost you can earthen shield serenities but it's kind of it's you could be a little more liberal with earthen shield it's not like the biggest deal ever if you have to use it sometimes just you know feel free to use it try and drop it before you get cc'd um you're going to end up using it really really early in fights and just it comes off cooldown really quickly so it's uh it's a good one to use and normally after that you kind of like end up throwing down the healing tide it's uh it's not nearly as good as it used to be it's not like kind of like the heal your whole raid to full hp it's just going to be extra healing it's something that i don't mind just like throwing out there these days i think it actually just heals for a little bit more than healing stream but maybe i'm wrong and then from there you know you just you got the spirit link and you got the ascendance i actually um uh, if you want you can tie in healing tide with uh spirit link to try and top your whole team and with Ascendance, Ascendance is just kind of like your last wall defense. It is an absolute ton of healing. You want to make sure that you're in range. You want to make sure that you're in range of actually topping with Ascendance. For example, if I'm healing this guy with Ascendance, he's too far to actually get the Ascendance heal. But if you're this close, then he's going to get the Ascendance heal. It's 20 yard range. Actually, maybe he's still a little bit too far. Uh, there, he got it that time. 20 yard range. It's actually a lot shorter than, than you would imagine. So you want to make sure that they're in that range. One thing to note about Ascendance is if you know, you and someone else is dying and you're really far, if you heal him with Ascendance from this far, it heals him for 870k, it'll also heal you for 870k. You'll take the full effect of the Ascendance heal. So sometimes it's okay to actually use it from a lot further, but um, Ascendance is going to be your most powerful cooldown. It's going to be the one that is basically, this is going to heal my whole team to full HP, so I want to make sure that I'm using this at the proper time. You don't want to be able to get CC done it immediately. You don't want to. You don't want to be able to get locked down on it immediately. So you want to make sure that the uh, enemy's kind of like out of CC, out of interrupts, and then you're going to go ahead and pop the ascendance and top the whole team. Uh, one last thing I'm just going to touch on is just kind of like I think Shaman's biggest weakness in every single expansion is just kind of dying to melee. Um, so just kind of like basic get away from melee is uh, you want to definitely use pillars to your advantage. And also you may not have known this, but Ghost Wolf is a uh, is really powerful. It actually makes it so you can't be reduced below 100% movement speed or 100% movement speed if you're snared. So if you have like chains of ice on you, hamstring on you, you know, disable on you, crippling poison on you, doesn't matter what the slow is. If you have any of those slows on you, and you're in Ghost Wolf, you're going to be running just at normal movement speed, which is this. So 
you're going to be running at this speed. Maybe actually a little bit slower. I'm not sure if I have any movement speed increases, but you get the point. So if you if you're trying to get away from melee, you can throw down an earth mine and you can go ghost wolf and you will always be faster than them. So this is going to be your biggest your biggest uh, survival factor is kind of, you know, just using a pillar to your advantage. Um, you know, if they're kind of chasing you behind pillars, let's just say the fight's happening over here, you know, someone comes behind a pillar, just feel free to just drop the earth grab behind its pillar, you know, gust a win away and just, you know, try and keep getting distance. Kiting is going to be your biggest, uh, your biggest, like, um, helper, I guess, in the uh, the melee cleave situation. Sometimes it's going to be a little trickier to get away than just dropping the uh, the earth grab and leaping away. But you got to kind of like rotate it in. You know, for example, let's just say that was a warrior. He's going to blade storm that route. He's going to leap back onto you. So now you're kind of in a situation where you can't get away. So when they reconnect, that's when you're going to drop the earth and shield. You're going to heal up a little bit, and then you're just going to do it again when it comes off CD. So you got to make sure that you're kiting to the best of your ability to try and get away from those melee. All right.